Malware is the combination between malicious and software. What that means is a software that is created to harm, destroy, or spy in your computer. A cyber weapon is malware created and used by countries or organizations to attack another country or organization to destroy or sabotage critical infrastructure. 안녕하십니까, Nicolas Elmida. And today we are going to talk about one of the most mysterious, fascinating, complex and powerful cyber weapons ever created. The cyber weapon we are going to talk about today is a worm. Worms are just one of the many kinds of malware that you can find. Another kind of malware you can find is a virus. And I know you heard this before because many people say virus, worm, malware, like if they were the same, but they are not the same. A virus and a worm are different on the way that they replicate, on the way that they spread themselves. A virus needs a host. Just like a biological virus, it needs a host to be able to live. And that's why you've heard some people saying that they downloaded a file that was infected. What that means is that they downloaded a file, they opened the file, the content of the file was there, but it was infected with the virus. So the virus needs this host file to be able to spread himself. A worm doesn't need a file to spread himself. A worm can just replicate itself, for example, on USBs. The worm we're talking about today is an amazing piece of software. Cyber weapons are just like normal weapons. They need a missile and they need a payload. The missile part of the weapon is used to take the payload to the target. So the missile part is the one in charge of getting inside of the computer and then once it decides it should, it will deploy the payload. And the payload is the one that is usually the destructive one. So let's talk about the missile part of this worm. The missile part of this worm was very, very advanced. Let me explain. First of all, it arrived to your computer via a USB. So if my computer was infected and I gave you a USB that was previously in my computer, you will get the worm as well. But the worm arrived into your computer encrypted and he will decrypt himself while it was in your computer. Then this worm basically called home. It basically sent all the information of your computer like IP address, Wi-Fi cards, operative system, drivers, all that stuff. It will send them back to two specific domains. One domain was mypremierfootball.com and the other one was todaysfootball.com. These were domains created to receive information from the virus. So whenever the virus arrives to your computer, it will immediately ping and call those two domains. The most interesting part is that this worm installed himself on the kernel root ring of your computer. Computers have many security rings. The outermost security rings is the application security ring where every application you installed goes. Then we have the driver security ring and at the center we have the core security ring. The core security ring is basically where the operative system lives. The worm was able to install himself there next to the operative system. And what that means is that the worm could control what the antivirus saw or didn't see. And that is incredible. It basically was one level on top of the antivirus. Mental, crazy, but the question is how can somebody program this? And the answer is using four zero days. A zero day is a hole in a system that nobody has ever discovered before, okay? A zero day is a hole that maybe I find on your website that you had zero days to fix because I just found it today. A zero day is very, very rare and zero days are very, very expensive. This worm we are talking today had four of them together that no antivirus knew, not even Microsoft knew. And that is impressive. So impressive that it cannot be accomplished with one single person. This was a team of people that had corporate or government resources to be able to get four zero days. And this is not even the most advanced thing this worm did. One thing that it did is that it installed a driver in your computer. And usually computers don't allow drivers that come from unknown sources. So this worm was signed by a real company. This worm looked like it came from a real company because it had a signature from the company called Realtek. Realtek is a Taiwanese company and this code was signed by them. This doesn't mean that they were the ones that created the code. What this means is that somebody stole the keys of encryption of Realtek and then signed the code with them. And this is very important because most encryption keys are on computers usually air-gapped. 
Air gap means computers that are never, ever, ever going to touch the internet. This means computers that you can only access them by being physically present. So what that means is that somebody got access to the real tech company, could go to the room where that computer was and extracted the signing keys so then it could give it to the hackers so the hackers can sign the code. And that is mind blowing. That is like something out of a movie. Now, the most mysterious thing about this worm is the fact that when it infected you, most of the time, it wouldn't do anything to your machine. Actually, it infected more than 100,000 machines, but it didn't do anything to most of them because your machine had to have some specific requirements. And if those requirements were true, it will deploy the payload and then the attack will start. So the missile was everywhere. It was on many machines, but it didn't cause any harm. It will just go to your computer see that you are not the target and then move on to a new computer. That's it. So now we have to ask ourselves, what was the target? The worm would deploy the payload only if it found that the computer that it infected was running a software called WinCC. WinCC is a software created by Siemens and is created to control and monitor something called a PLC. PLC means programmable logic controller. A PLC can control the boiler room, can control the traffic lights, can control the energy grid. That's a PLC, okay? It's a pretty critical piece of infrastructure. And this worm was only targeting that. Specifically, this worm was targeting PLCs that were connected to something called a frequency converter. Frequency converter basically regulates the amount of electricity that you can give to an engine. And now one more question. What engine was this looking for? What it was looking for was for a nuclear centrifuge. A nuclear centrifuge is a tube that spins really, really, really fast and is used to enrich uranium. Uranium is a gas coming from Earth and nuclear weapons need uranium, but they need enriched uranium. What that means is that they take the gas that comes from Earth and they make it spin really, really, really fast until they get a small amount of enriched uranium. That is what this worm was looking for. This worm was looking for computers on a nuclear facility plant that were connected to a frequency converter that was regulating the frequency of a nuclear centrifuge. So this is what the payload did and this is how the attack happened. Once this worm knew, that it was connected to a 32-bit Windows machine with WinCC installed, connected to a PLC that was controlling a frequency converter that was regulating the energy of a nuclear centrifuge, then the payload and the attack will begin. So how does the attack look like? Like this. First, it didn't do nothing for 13 days. After 13 days, it will increase the speed of the centrifuge for 15 minutes. Then, for 26 days, it didn't do anything. After 26 days, it will drop the speed of the centrifuge for another 15 minutes, and then at the end, wait it for 26 more days and restart the whole process. Now, nuclear centrifuges are very delicate, and because they're spinning very fast, you have to be very careful. And the problem is that if you increase the frequency too high or too low, they begin to crack, they begin to explode. And this is exactly what happened. And now we are done and we finally can talk about the target. The target of all this attack was Iran, specifically the Natanz nuclear facility. There, more than 1,000 nuclear centrifuges, poop, exploded. The creators of this worm were the United States of America and Israel. The reason why is because they didn't want Iran to get nuclear weapons and Iran was getting very, very close. So they came up with a strategy to sabotage Iran and to be able to slow them down. This is not a politic channel, so I'm not going to say if it's a good or a bad thing that Iran has nuclear weapons or not, but it's just a very, very fascinating cyber attack. Again, it infected 100,000 computers. It didn't do anything in most of them, and it only, only targeted computers that were connected to a frequency converter that were connected to a nuclear centrifuge. All these two make them explode this is not the last cyber attack the world has ever seen, specifically between Israel, the US and Iran. And also, interestingly enough, at the beginning of this month, there was another explosion at the Natanz facility that we don't know what caused it. Cybersecurity and cyber warfare is real, everybody, and it's coming. 
and we should be prepared and our governments be prepared. This happened a long time ago, but still, it could happen. And now, even more. And before I go, a long time ago, I made a video about Windows for developers and many people asked me for a tutorial into how to set up Windows 10 with Windows Subsystem for Linux. So finally, that tutorial is finished and you can access it right now. Click in the link on the description. It has subtitles and it will teach you how to set up your Windows machine like an awesome pro so you can have a beautiful development environment. Thank you so much for watching the video. Let me know what you think on the comments. I'm super passionate about cybersecurity, viruses and everything. That's how I started programming. So let me know if you would like to see more of this content. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for listening to me. Don't forget to be happy. Don't forget to eat kimchi. Kamsanida, Saranghyo. Bye-bye.